Hello and welcome to the paper Creativity and Design Skills. First of all, let's begin with the session on an introduction to graphic design. We are all familiar with the popular adage, a picture is worth a thousand words. Simply means that a complex idea can be conveyed much easily and effectively using an image instead of long narratives. The term graphic design or visual communication or communication design also relate to the idea that graphical representation can easily communicate with the viewers compared to the plain text represent representation. The word graphic design was coined by the American type designer, book designer and calligrapher William Addison Duggins in the year 1922. He used this term to define his process of designing books using a combination of typography, illustrations and design. Earlier, book designers concentrated only on the readability. They used neutral typefaces and the use of images were very rare. Dwiggins changed the process of book design from being a simple craft to an interpretive art. The advancements in electronic media as well as the emergence of new media channels have produced some drastic changes in the graphic design arena over the last decade. The process of designing as well as the development of information also have gone through many changes. The new term communication design has come into existence which is considered as an interdisciplinary area between graphic design and information development. While graphic design is more co concerned with the aesthetics of representing an idea in a design form, information development is mainly concerned with how different media communicate with people. Thus, communication design approach is not only concerned with the aesthetics of designing media, but also with making the best use of various channels to effectively communicate the message to the target audience. In practice, both these terms are used interchangeably and often communication design is used as a synonym of graphic design. Now let's see what is graphic design. The term, the very term graphic design can refer to a number of artistic and professional disciplines which focus on visual communication and presentation. It also can be defined as the way one can imagine and picture an idea. It is the process of choosing and organizing words, images and messages into a form that communicates and influences its audience. The term is also used to mention the end product of a design process. The graphic designer may use typography, visual arts and composition techniques to achieve the desired output. Graphic design can be the process as well as the output. In simple terms, graphic design is the composition or organization of various design elements based on certain principles. Graphic design as a process also involves developing new and innovative ways to represent an idea or a piece of information. In the modern scenario, particularly in web and new media design, the designer is left with a lot of new elements in addition to traditional elements like text and images. The new set of elements include flash movies, videos, audio and many more interactive items. In the present scenario, graphic design is considered as the nucleus of communication design. A person who initiates a graphic design process need to start with the following fundamental questions. Let's see what are those questions. The first one is, who will be the potential audience of that particular design? Secondly, what is the objective of communication and what is the message need to be communicated? Next one is, in case there are more than a message to be communicated, how it needs to be prioritized? And the next is, what should be the tone of the message? As soon as the designer finds answers to the said questions, 
she or he can start the actual design process. The skills for a successful graphic designer include but are not limited to drawing, photography, composition and typography. He or she also required to be familiar with different software applications intended for specific tasks. Now let us see what is the difference between graphic design and desktop publishing or DTP. Graphic design and desktop publishing or DTP share so many similarities that people often use the terms interchangeably. In a few words, the difference can be stated as graphic design is more design oriented while desktop publishing is more production oriented. The duty of a graphic designer is to bring concepts, ideas and arrangements for visually communicating a specific message and make them into a design concept. Desktop publishing is merely the mechanical execution in which design concepts are turned to newsletters, brochures, posters, cards etc. either in digital files for sharing across the web or to be used for commercial printing. Most of the graphic designers get involved in desktop publishing the production side as well. But on the other hand, not everyone who does desktop publishing do graphic design. In short, graphic design is more than desktop publishing. It does encompass DTP but also touches upon various other aspects of design which enables a proper communication across different media. Graphic design requires considerably more expertise, experience and also advanced software compared to desktop publishing. Now let us discuss which are the theories that are related with graphic design, the fundamental theories. In this section we cover a few of the fundamental theories which are often used in the field of graphic design. The first theory that we are going to discuss about is Gestalt theory. The Gestalt theory or the old form theory defines the principles of perception. The theory refers to the form forming capability of our senses particularly with respect to the visual recognition of figures and all forms instead of just a collection of simple lines and curves. The all is greater than the sum of the parts is something which is often said while explaining Gestalt theory. The Gestalt laws are used in graphic design also. The laws can be used as guides while composing a design. Utilizing the Gestalt principles can make designs more coherent, connected or unified. The following are the innate mental laws that determine how humans see and perceive images. The first one is emergence. Emergence is the process of complex pattern formation from simpler rules. It is demonstrated by the perception of the dog picture which depicts a Dalmatian dog sniffing the ground in the shade of overhanging trees. The dog is not recognized by first identifying its parts including feet, ears, nose, tail etc. and then inferring the dog from those component parts. Instead, the dog is perceived as a all, all at once. However, this is a description of what occurs in vision and not an explanation. Gestalt theory does not explain how the percept of a dog emerges. The second one is reification. Reification is the constructive or generative aspect of perception by which the experienced percept contains more explicit spatial information than the sensory stimulus on which it is based. The third one is multistability. Multistability or multistable perception is the tendency of ambiguous perceptual experiences to pop back and forth unstably between two or more alternative interpretations. This is seen for example in the Necker cube and in Rubin's figure or wave solution shown here. Other examples include the three pronged widget and artist M. C. Escher's artwork 
and the appearance of flashing marquee lights moving first one direction and then suddenly the, the, the other. Again, Gestalt does not explain how images appear multi-stable, only that they do so. The fourth one is invariance. Invariance is the property of perception whereby simple geometrical objects are recognized independent of rotation, translation and scale as well as several other variations such as elastic deformations, different lighting and different component features. For example, the objects in A in the figure are all immediately recognized as the same basic shape which are immediately distinguishable from the forms in B. They are even recognized despite perspective and elastic deformations as in C. And when depicted using different graphic elements as in D. The laws based on the Gestalt theories which hypothetically allow us to predict the interpretation of sensation are mentioned as Gestalt laws. The first Gestalt law is law of closure. Here the mind may experience elements it does not perceive through sensation in order to complete a regular figure that is to increase regularity. This results in an effect of filling in miss, missing information and organizing information which is present to make a whole. The second one is law of similarity. The mind groups similar elements into collective entities or totalities. This similarity might depend on relationships of form, color, size or brightness. The principle of similarity states that mind has got a tendency to see things which share visual characteristics will be seen as belonging together. And the next one is law of proximity. Here the spatial or temporal proximity of elements may induce the mind to perceive a collective or totality. In other words, the principle of proximity states that things which are closer together will be seen as belonging together. The next Gestalt law is law of area and symmetry. The principle of area states that the smaller of two overlapping figures is perceived as figure while the larger is regarded as ground. The principle of the symmetrical figure is that it is seen as a closed figure. Symmetrical contours thus define a figure and isolate it from its ground. Symmetrical images are perceived collectively even in spite of distance. The next one is law of continuity. The mind continues visual, auditory and kinetic patterns. Thus the principle of continuity predicts the preference for continuous figures. The next one is law of common fate. Elements with the same moving direction are perceived as a collective or unit. Here is a chance that both principles of proximity and similarity are in place and that result in the perception of things as it change grouping. Now let us discuss about the second theory that is golden ratio. The golden ratio describes the perfectly symmetrical relationship between two proportions approximately equal to a 1 is to 1.61 ratio. The golden ratio can be illustrated using a golden rectangle. A large rectangle consisting of a square with uh, sides equal in length to the shortest length of the rectangle and a smaller rectangle. The Fibonacci series of numbers are based on this ratio. The concept of golden ratio can be applied in graphic designs to create separate entities in a design. Another theory that is related with graphic design is rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is a theory dictating how an image should be composed in, or in order to create an aesthetically pleasing result. In all honesty, it is more of a guideline than an actual rule. The basic principle behind the rule of thirds is to imagine breaking an image down into thirds. 
both horizontally and vertically so that you have nine parts. With this grid in mind, the rule of thirds now identifies four important parts of the image that one should consider placing points of interest while the image is framed. Not only this, but it also gives four lines that are also useful positions for elements in an image. The theory is that if we place points of interest in the intersections or along the lines, then the image becomes more balanced and will enable a viewer of the image to interact with it more naturally. Studies have shown that when viewing images, people's eyes usually go to one of the intersection points most naturally rather than to the center of the image using the rule of thirds works with this natural way of viewing an image rather than working against it. Now let's move to the next topic, types of graphic design. Graphic design utilizes the various elements such as typography, photography, illustration, animation and color to solve visual communication problems. With the development of computer and a variety of graphic design softwares, new areas emerged out of graphic design. The areas can be broadly classified into publication design, identity design, web design and interface design. The first one is publication design. Publication design is one of the important aspects for media outlets, artists, promotional projects and many other disciplines to communicate effectively. It is the most common form of graphic design which can be found all around in the form of brochures, magazines, advertisements, product covers, photo albums, letterheads, identity cards, banners, flex boards and so on. Thus, this stream of graphic design can be considered as any design which is printed. The medium and the material used may change according to its purpose. The designers need to coordinate with the editorial team or the content developers and should plan their designs based on the requirement. Now let's move to the another topic, identity design. Identity design involves the design of logos, brand identities, letterheads, forms, color schema and so on. More than designing some materials, identity design is more concerned with giving a personality to an organization, product or service. Often it is shaped around the perceptions of the audience. Jacob Cass defined identity design as it is based around the visual devices used within a company usually assembled within a set of guidelines. These guidelines that make up an identity usually administer how the identity is applied throughout a variety of mediums using approved color palettes, fonts, layouts, measurements and so forth. These guidelines ensure that the identity of the company is kept coherent which in turn allows the brand as a whole to be recognizable. Now let's move to another topic, web design. Web design is the design of different web pages and bringing them together to form a website. It includes information design as well as the user interface design. The necessary programming required to make a website functional is not a part of web design. Programming comes under the broad category of web development or web application programming. Thus, the term web design is normally used to describe the design process relating to the front end or client side design of a website including writing markup. The term web design also encompasses many skills and disciplines in the production and maintenance of websites. And the next topic is interface design. Interface can be defined as the front end where the users interact to use an application or a device. Interface design or user interface design primarily involves the design of front end. 
the user interface designers are also responsible for designing the navigation as well as the various windows which is required for proper user interaction. The prime concern of user interface design is to make the user's experience as simple and efficient as possible. User interface design aims to enhance the visual usability and technological qualities of an interface. It adds to the satisfaction of the person using a product or a service. In recent times, user interface design has evolved into yet another stream, namely user experience design, UXT or UUD or XT, which focuses on enhancing the user experience by making necessary improvements in the usability and accessibility of a particular interface. The stream not only focuses on the visual aspects of the interface design, but also looks into how each element will interact with the user and how the experience could be improved. And the next topic is communication design. Communication design is considered as an interdisciplinary area between the graphic design and information development. It can be also considered as a system based development approach in which the entirety of the media and message is considered as a single integrated process than a series of discrete actions. In the year 1983, Patrick Marsh coined the term communication design in his book Messages That Work A Guide to Communication Design. It is considered as one of the earliest use of the term. In this book, Marsh mentions that the communication design model consists of a source, a message and a receiver and he devised a 21 step systematic process to designing effective communications. In his book titled Communication Design, Principles, Methods and Practice, published in the year 2004, George Faraskara defines the term visual communication like this. Visual communication design, seen as an activity, is the process of conceiving, programming, projecting and realizing visual communications that are usually produced through industrial means and are aimed at broadcasting specific messages to specific sectors of the public. This is done with a view toward having an impact on the public's knowledge, attitudes or behavior in an intended direction. Referring to this definition, Joanna Chauker in her study concludes that within this context, the field of communication design would only differ from that of visual communication design in the produced outcomes which might be visual but could also cover a broad spectrum of sensory channels such as auditory, tactile, olfactory, gustatory or any combination of these. In the same study, Joanna summarizes Faraskara's recommendations for an effective communication design process and it goes like this. The first one is a collaborative approach with stakeholders and end users. Secondly, an interdisciplinary research approach. Thirdly, an extended process that includes problem identification in the beginning and evaluation in the end. Luminan Design, a New York based design firm with 15 years of expertise in communication problem solving analysis and design in architecture and engineering, software and graphic design environments defines communication design like this. Communication design is the practice of planning and shaping a message in content, form and delivery. Communication designers craft effective and expressive ways to share ideas with others using an approach focusing on both problem solving and persuasion. Communication design is a both broad term and field. It potentially encompasses a number of design practices including information design, information architecture, advertising and marketing. Communication design is about message and effect, 
It focuses on touching people through transmission of ideas. Therefore, communication design comes with a responsibility to compassionately understand the recipient's existing perceptions and systems of beliefs while designing solutions that fulfill the sender's goals in sharing his or her ideas. These definitions make it clear that communication design is not just about the process of designing the end product, but also deals with back-end activities related to the production itself. Lastly, let's discuss about composition. Composition is the key in any form of design and graphic design or communication design is no exception. Composition is the combining of distinct parts or elements to form a whole. It can also be the manner in which such parts are combined or related. In a graphic designer's point of view, it can be explained as the harmonious arrangement of elements of design in relation to each other and to the all. The quality of a design heavily relies on its composition. In this section, we will be looking at the different elements and principles of design employed while composing a design. The elements can be considered as basic component or units present in the composition of any visual design as work of art. They are say all form the design and gives an idea to the viewer. In practice, each design element may contribute in the formation of another element. The elements of design include point, line, shape and form, space, size, direction, color and texture and pattern. The elements of a design are the what of a design, then the principle are the how. If the elements are the ingredients of a dish, then principle can be thought of as the recipe for preparing that dish. As already stated, the composition is the placement or the arrangement of visual elements in a defined area of canvas. The different principles of design include balance, unity, variety, harmony, contrast, emphasis, repetition, space, proportion, rhythm and color theory. Now let us summarize what we have already discussed in this session. In this module, the different forms of design and how the graphic design field has evolved into communication design has been discussed. The requirements have changed over time and various design methodologies have got evolved catering to those needs. Though the process of design has changed over time, designers continue to use the elements of design and follow the principles of composition. Geometric principles and grid based design methodologies are employed in the process of design to make them visually appealing. It will be discussed in the coming modules. Before going to the next session, try to work out the given assignments. Assignment 1. Design a poster on graphic design illustrating the purpose and process of the discipline. Second, prepare a brief note on the different disciplines of graphic design with necessary illustrations. For getting more details about graphic design, you can also refer the books like Dictionary of Graphic Design and Designers by Livingston, Allen and Isabella, published by Thames and Hudson in the year 1992 in London. Messages that Work, A Guide to Communication Designs by Patrick O. Marsh, published by Educational Technology Publications in the year 1983 in Inglewood's Cliffs, New Jersey. Communication Design, Principles, Methods and Practice by George Frascara in the year 2004, published from New York and by Allworth Press. There are certain web links also. Hope you have enjoyed the session. Thank you.